you your character yet? Yes. Alright, go. Uh, now I can go. Yes. I thought I'm the host. You're the host. But you're telling me what to do. Because I'm in character now. You're in character? If I was a regular dream, I would never tell you. That's, you're goddamn right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Night at the Movies. Tonight, June and I watched Ghostbusters, the latest feminist fucking shit show oh out by my God. fucking Paul Fig was like, it's pure propaganda. I have feminist things everywhere. Vaginas in our faces the entire time, assaulting us. It's insulting my intelligence to think that women are capable enough to run a scientific organization, let alone go out and be action heroes. Women scientists? Women sci science? Women? No, pick one. On top of that, too, the black character was capable? Cap cap she had a job. She had a, yeah, she had a job. How believable is that? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, but really, how'd you like the movie? It was good? I really liked it. It was good, right? I liked it a lot, actually. Hello. My name is Erin Gilbert, Doctor of Particle Physics. <laughs> that stuff went everywhere, by the way, in every crack. Very hard to wash off. I wanted to hate it. Yeah. I wanted to cringe. Every, if, if any of you follow me on the, the, the internet, I was waiting to cringe. I was like, yes, I cannot wait to just absolutely tear this movie apart. Well, you and I had spent a good deal of time arguing with uh, left-leaning minds who liked to believe that the reason nobody liked the trailer was because of women. Yes. When this movie was first announced, I was like, okay, a Ghostbusters remake, whatever, it's women. I don't care. Like, that's cool, I don't care. And... It's just a gimmick. Whatever. So you, I was like, you, it's just a and gimmick. And I told everybody, guys, it's not a feminist thing. Seriously, it's just women. Like, it's not... Just because it's a... It's women doesn't mean it's feminism. Like, they, but then, they posted a picture of the cast and the crew, like, girl power. And I was like, okay, you know, maybe it's just... You know, like, they're excited that there's a lot of women working on the show. Whatever, whatever. When, when I saw that picture, I was like, okay, Paul Figg's pandering. He's yeah. clearly pandering. But again, that doesn't mean that the movie's going to be bad. Yeah. So, I was like, okay, maybe it's not pandering. Okay, maybe that's just one picture. Then Paul Figg went on some tangent. Oh, all the people who think this movie's gonna be terrible are just man babies and losers and haters. Right, he was essentially admitting that the movie was made for feminists at that point. I was born in 84 when the first Ghostbusters came out, but I essentially grew up with that movie. I hate remakes. Like, re remakes, reboots, anything like that. If this was gonna be like part three with a new cast and been like the old cast still exists, that's fine by me. Yeah. But the fact that it's like a full on remake, reboot you of the original. No, because look at Robocop. Look at the other ones. It's just like a soulless cash cow. They're like, oh, here's an IP that already exists. Let's just use it to make yeah. money. Use the name. Just shovel out a movie as quickly as possible. Yeah. I thought I was going to hate it from the trailer. The trailers, oh, no, the trailers were. Awful. were God awful. Yeah. The worst trailers I've ever seen for any movie ever. It didn't do the movie any justice whatsoever. Yeah, I don't know who was in charge. Like, very rarely does the director have a hand in making the trailer, though. Honestly, I think it's all the trailers guy fault that people were just shitting all over. You know what the funny thing is, though? Even after people shit on it, they, they remade the trailer and re-released it, and it still did very poorly. All of the mistakes that the trailer made, though, or at least most of the mistakes that the trailer made, are not actually mistakes that are in the movie. Yeah. Now, this is by no means a flawless movie. There's very few flawless movies in the world where everything works. And the original Ghostbusters is like one of three movies I can think of uh -huh. that are entirely flawless. I just watched the first Ghostbusters movie last night, actually, for the first time. And it was really good. That's all you have to say about yes. it? Yes. I just want to say that it's the first time I watched it. I never saw it. Here are good things about the original Ghostbusters movie that aren't in the new one. The original Ghostbusters, they used practical effects for everything. Yeah. The only effects that I would say don't really work in the original are the claymation, um, when those dog things are running through the halls it's and dated. stuff. It's, it's dated. It's just dated. Back then, maybe it looked good, but it's still It was dated. before computer-generated graphics, though. Other than that, though, everything was puppets. The ghosts were puppets and they superimposed the ghosts onto film footage. Like, you could tell they were puppets and they were like goofy and stuff, but like, it looked 
cool. believable. All of the actors were solid. All of the characters were were had arcs or minimal arcs, but that all the characters were interesting. The story was simple, but solid. Yeah. Um, Dan Aykroyd and his crazy "I believe in aliens, I believe in ghosts" was definitely reined in, since considering he was the straight man in the movie. Yeah. Other than the whole Zool is bringing back ghosts from another dimension thing, it was believable. Mm -hmm. Generally a believable story. In a world where ghosts exist and science can battle ghosts, I believe that there would be people like the Ghostbusters that could actually battle. Mm -hmm. We have dedicated our whole lives to studying the paranormal. Now there's sightings all over the city. There are people out there that need our help. Holtzman, you're a brilliant engineer. Oh! Aaron, no one's better at quantum physics than you. I always do that. I'm joining the club. I know New York. You're in. Hello. I'm here at the receptionist job. Hi. You're hired. <laughs> Disclaimer, I like Pulp Figs movies. Who do you? Yeah, no. They're cute. They're funny. Well, I mean, I can only think of two that I've seen. Uh, the Heat and Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids is a solid comedy. I love that. The Heat is charming and cute. I'm not a big Sandra Bullock fan. And I think she kind of looks like she's made of rubber now. Melissa McCarthy. I'm not one of those people that's really on the Melissa McCarthy hate train. People say that they hate her because she plays the same person in every she movie. She plays similar. Similar, but different. The only movie I can think of that I hate her in is Identity Theft, and that's because Jason Bateman clearly created a movie specifically for her character and didn't appreciate the character. He even said in an interview, it was like, oh, well, she's really hot right now, so I just thought that we'd get her before, uh, before she's too hot to get our hands on her. You literally had no passion behind your movie. You just wanted to get Melissa McCarthy on one of your IPs. I think she has like perfect comedic timing in all of her movies. Yeah. She knows how to like, deliver her lines really funny. Yeah. And so I don't see really the hate where, that comes, where the hate comes from. Bridesmaids, good movie. There's no clear message in Bridesmaids. Like, you can't tell that, I didn't even know the director was a feminist. And then in... Is he even? I guess, yeah. yeah. He freaked out. He pulled yeah. a George Lucas. When Red Tails came out and it was getting panned, he was going around to like Oprah and stuff and he's like, oh, everybody hates it because it's black people. Nobody likes my movie because exactly. it's black people. No, They're all hate racist. It. We hate it because it's a bad movie. Yeah. Same with the trailers of Ghostbusters. We hate it because it looks cheesy, it looks predictable, it looks stupid. Right. It looked like a Saturday Night Live skit. I thought that's what the whole movie was going to be. Yeah. Saturday Night Live skit. Like, what if the Ghostbusters were women? Wacky! I thought that was going to be the whole movie. It, it does make sense that they went for a gimmick, like they're all women, because they were in negotiations for making a third one forever, and Bill Murray kept saying, no, I'm not going to do it. They kept giving him scripts, and he's just like, no, I don't want to do it. And then all of a sudden, he's like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And the guy plays Egon died. So then they sat on it for another few years, and they're like, we, well, okay, let's do something. What they could have done, instead of a, a remake or a reboot, they do... Just they, be in the same universe. They, yeah, like, do what they call now a soft reboot, where the previous story still exists, but you bring in a whole new cast, and you use the old cast to kind of, like, usher in the new cast. Like Star Wars? Yeah, and they kind of did that ceremonially with the addition of all the original surviving cast members. The receptionist and the three surviving Ghostbusters all play bit parts in, in the movie. The trailer was fucking god-awful. The trailer made it look like it was an action movie, and the trailer showed some of the worst comedy I've ever seen in my life. Oh my god! It was actually all of the worst jokes in the movie are in the trailer. Yeah. But here's the, here's the thing though. People often complain that trailers always show the best parts and ruin the movie. No, this, this is the worst this parts. Is like, this is like an overcorrection. Yeah. They showed all the worst parts the worst of the movie. Parts. And you know what's funny? Like, you know that stupid joke? Holtzman, come on! The hat is too much, right? Is it the wig or the hat? That was the only joke I, don't, I think I didn't laugh at. And when it happened, me and you were silent, and the whole audience cracked up. Like... 
You know, I was I was so sure that I was gonna hate the movie. Well, I went in with an open mind, like yeah. maybe this is good, but like you know, I'm I'm pragmatic. I'm like obviously I think I'm gonna hate this movie. I was gonna go in with a clicker and count all the yeah. times I laughed. I actually laughed. You laughed. You were several the old, times. you were laughing so hard. You were the hardest laugher in the whole. Well, thing. that's just me. Though. Yeah, I always laugh the hardest. Well, I wasn't laughing at every joke though. No, no, no. There were a lot of jokes that I didn't like. Can we just okay? So are we, we were, are we done with Paul Fig though? Yeah, Paul Fig sucks. All right, so we. <laughs> His movies are good, but Paul Fig sucks. Paul Fig sucks as a person. Yeah, like, that's the thing. You have to separate people from their creation. Whiny, yeah, he's a whiny little crybaby. Whiny. Baby. He was clear. He clearly made this movie to pander to women and to pander to feminists, but that doesn't translate into the film. At all. At all. There's like one joke where Leslie Jones falls on her back and is like, I don't know if it's because I'm a lady or because I'm black, but... That was kind of funny, but, though, because it was like... It was like her being overly offended. Yeah, is the it because joke, I'm a woman the, or is it because joke, I'm black? The like, joke wasn't that the crowd was racist or sexist. Yeah, she was overly sensitive yeah, yeah, yeah. to it. There was another part. Okay, so right? there was no feminist anything in this movie. Let's no. just get that. There was one part where the quirky, weird, blonde one gives her a pocket knife. She's like, a woman should always protect herself. And I'm thinking, okay, that was that was kind of... Then I'm like, wait a minute, that's not feminist because feminists don't want women to protect themselves. They say rapists there, shouldn't rape. Th there was a, an awesome fourth wall break. Though, yeah, yeah. When they first decide that they're Ghostbusters and they, they do their, their first whatever publicity stunt. Oh, they're like... Our first YouTube video is hun has a hundred comments, and me and him are just like looking at each other, like a hundred comments. Wow, a hundred comments! We're such assholes. Yeah, we're dicks. It was like when my dad said, my dad said his YouTube video had a thousand views, and he was like, "Yeah, so I'm doing pretty good." And we were just like, "I was trying to be nice." I know, I know. But we were such dicks. We were like a thousand. You know, if I had a, I, I was, I was trying to hold it under my breath, but. I was thinking, if I had a YouTube video that only had a thousand views, I would consider it a complete failure of a video. <laughs> How bad does a video have to be that people won't even click on it to see what it is? <laughs> My dad's videos. We're so what. spoiled, though. We are. The fourth wall break was... One of the comments was, Ain't no bitches, Ain't gonna, no bitches bust gonna bust ghosts. ghosts. It was like so good. We laughed so hard. That Nobody else caught it in the audience. No. Did you hear that? We were just like, ah. So let's speak to our experience in the theater. This is the first time this has ever happened. I'm not a big fan of 3D to begin with. Everybody in the audience, for a moment, we all thought that our 3D glasses were broken, and the pro what had happened is the 3D projector wasn't lined yeah. up. So we were seeing everything as two images, even with the glasses on, and we're, we're all screaming, or at least a couple of us were, hey, the projector, My the projector, like, focus. Projector. And then the guy right next to us was like, there's already enough controversy behind this movie. <laughs> <laughs> The feminist did it! I was nervous too because there was also a girl with blue hair sitting yeah. right in front of us in the audience. I was like, oh no, this is like... I was really, I was actually really worried with all... And do you know what was making me worry that this was going to be a feminist shit show? Was Paul Figg's reaction to people not liking the trailer. I know. Paul Figg is the only reason that I thought that this movie was going to be yeah. feminist propaganda. The hype and the outrage and the, if you don't like it, you're a misogynist. Well, it turns out that the fact that the characters are women literally have no has nothing literally to do with the story or the movie at all. It was great. At nothing. The fact that the four of them have vaginas is irrelevant. Never was I like, oh, they're women. Yeah, there was only the, the two lines, the no bitch is gonna bust ghosts and the woman always has to protect herself. Yeah. Those are the only two times that, the, that they're like, women factor in at yeah. all. Yeah, other than that, there was no like feminist. It in yeah, there so Paul Fig, you are the reason your movie almost fucking flopped, yeah. or is going to flop. I don't know, it's opening night tonight. Yeah. There was lots of funny parts, like a lot. Yeah. The the humor was surprisingly good. I didn't laugh I'm at everything. I'm very picky about my humor. As the direction goes though, the pacing was good. There's one thing in the pacing that didn't really work. Um, you know how sometimes the movies do a scene where it's like, look at all this equipment, let's test the equipment? They did that twice. Did they? Yes, remember the second time she's like, I've got all these new things. It's like it's like a, a wood chipper and it's like a grenade. We already did this scene. Do we have to do it a second time? It like it ruined the pace of the movie. Another thing that didn't really fit 
the tone of the movie was the huge action scene at the end. I felt that it was really out of place from the rest of the movie. Yeah, when they fought all the ghosts. Yeah, and there was a lot of reasons for that. The one being the ghosts didn't look super spectacular. They looked like video game characters. They did. They looked they, like Luigi's Mansion characters. They didn't look like ghosts. They looked like just glowing people. Mm -hmm. They looked like they just put a glow effect on a person that was standing there. The fact that it was clearly just filmed on a soundstage and they're just rolling around going like this. They didn't establish that the four of them were in any way fit. And I think you could argue that two of them are less than fit people. And the fact that they're running around, rolling around, doing yeah. all this action stuff. They didn't set that up. Like, they never trained for, like, physical combat. I do have to say, Melissa McCarthy lost a lot of weight. She is way she looks thinner. really good. Way, she's still got them hips, but she is she way good. thinner than before. I'm very... Good job. Yeah, you ever see that sitcom Mike and Molly? That's where she's her fattest. And it seems like every time she was done with a movie, she'd come back to Mike and Molly and she'd just... Yeah. back out again. But I saw an article that was like, oh, she got fired from her job because she lost too much weight. I really strongly doubt that a, a shitty sitcom would fire one of the most famous people on the planet right now because she's too skinny for the role, especially considering she's still pretty hefty. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, oh. Did you want to? Sorry. sorry. I'll let you. I'll let you. Next time. I made some predictions. Or I mean, I was I was basing my judgment on the movie on the trailer mm -hmm. when I did my uh, Dogma Slayer video. But from the trailer, it looked like Melissa McCarthy was playing the straight man, and it turned out that that's not true. It was Kristen no. Wiig that was playing yes. the straight man. Melissa McCarthy was actually, well, she wasn't the most wacky one, but she was definitely wackier. The first time you see her, she's wearing like big headgear. She's like, this is the future, guys, this is the future. Oh, what's this, one wonton, one wonton? I wanted yeah, more than one like, wonton. She's a little neurotic. She actually had a, a really interesting character. I would actually say that her character was the most interesting of them all. Kristen Wiig and Melissa McCarthy were the best ones in this movie. They were the anchors of this. They, were, like they were the Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray yes. of this movie. They were the two most interesting characters. They were the two um, most famous of all the four actors but on top of that uh, they, they're the funniest. Their acting, their characters really drove yeah. the story. They really anchored the story and they were definitely the focus. You definitely felt like uh, because they were friends growing up or whatever. I like their backstory too. It was a good idea. Like, oh, I'm a big, um, Kristen Wiig was a professor at an elite college. Right. Melissa McCarthy, they wrote a book together when they were younger about ghosts. She published the book behind Kristen Wiig's back, yes. right? So now people are Googling Kristen Wiig's professor and finding this ghost book and being like, this isn't science, this isn't professional. I thought that was a good backstory for them. Kristen Wiig and, uh, and Melissa McCarthy's character uh, both believed in ghosts before they wrote that book. Kristen Wiig saw a ghost when she was young and Melissa McCarthy was the only one that believed her and that's how they became friends. Yes. Someone is creating a device that amplifies paranormal activity. We need to build something to fight these damn ghosts. I don't know if it was a race thing or a lady thing, but I'm mad as hell. Can we talk about the things that we didn't like about the characters? So the blonde character, Kate McKinnon, absolutely hated the character. Hated, hated. the acting, hated the character, hated, hated. hated the comedy. As soon as she showed up, I was like, okay, I guess this is when the movie gets shit. I guess this is when it gets cringy. But all other characters, oh no, sorry, not all other characters, Melissa, and Christian just save it because the, the movie blonde, is about them. Yes. If you want to make it through this movie without wanting to kill yourself, pretend that Melissa McCarthy and the black Look I said the black woman. <laughs> the black. Be the racist misogynist on this show. If you want to make it through this movie without wanting to kill yourself, pretend that Kristen Wiig and Melissa McCarthy are the main characters in the movie. Forget about Kate McKinnon and Leslie Jones. Leslie Jones isn't so bad. She's not like super crazy stereotype like I thought she was going to be. Really? But Kate McKinnon was 
awful. So bad. It didn't come naturally to her at all. She was supposed to be like this weird kind of ass well, pie or I something. Got, I got what character she was trying to be, but Dirty, quirky. it didn't work at all. She did it. She it, was all over the place. I don't know if it was because she did it poorly or if it was because the character was terrible. She had one joke that I laughed at, at right at the end. The very last joke that she told. Oh. Kristen Wiig is like, what year is it? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was funny. Okay, there was a lot of funny jokes in this movie now that I'm thinking of it. Yeah, but that was the only one, the only one she that, told, that, that Kate funny. McKinnon told that I laughed at. Every other one I was like, oh my god. Why she is she ruined. in this movie? She ruins everything. First of all, her character is all over the place. The very first time you see her character, it immediately takes you out of the movie. Is she quirky and weird or is she nerdy and like off? Yes. She was like out there and then all of a sudden she'd be like, when she was giving the speech, she was like, I just. I really like. Are, which one are you? Are yeah. you like the nervous yeah, little that, that, aspy, or are you the quirky? Hey guys, I'm just so cool. I wear baggy pants. We might end up having to debate a little bit about Leslie Jones. She wasn't as bad as I thought she was going to be. I thought she was just going to be a racial stereotype, and she was, but it wasn't like insulting how much of a stereotype she was. It, it, it kind of worked, I think. For Stereotypes exist for a reason. There are lots of people like Leslie Jones in New York, especially working at the fucking subway. Well, no, I'm not subway. saying... I'm not so many of the jokes she told were so lame. Like, she'll always have, like, one-liners like, oh, hell no, like, I did not see this coming. Why do you need those? Why does it have to cut to her just so she can say something? But her really character did have a trait that none of them did. She knew all the history, history of the city. So anytime they were in some weird place, she's like, oh, this building used to be something yeah, else back cool. in the day. And it was, was like, like, okay, ah. that actually that actually drives the story. Yeah. That actually informs the audience about, yeah. about uh, what's happening and why it's happening. Because the first ghost she sees uh, is clearly a prisoner that was electrocuted. Uh, in the electrocution chair. She's like, right above us used to be the first prison in New York or some shit like that, where, where they used to electrocute people and it would take them forever, they'd just be like, shoot them. And be like, wow, okay, that really paints a picture of prisoners that not only died there, but died yeah. horrifically. She knew everything like about the hotel and stuff like that, so yeah, her character did come in handy. It wasn't just like, loud black lady. But all her jokes were just like, uh, I wasn't feeling it. Everybody, a lot of people in the audience were, but... I don't remember laughing at any of her jokes, but the difference was the Kate McKinnon jokes yeah. made me go, Yeah, oh. yeah, like, she made me, like... I fucking cringed and groaned every time she delivered a joke. Did you feel me, like, cringe? I was like, when I was holding your hand, I was like... Every time she was about to say something, like... No. I guess, yeah. I don't feel anything anymore. Queen this was her, her character, ready? That was essentially her character. And that was me. The difference between Kate McKinnon and Leslie Jones was Leslie Jones' character didn't necessarily do anything for me, but her character never took me out of the movie. Her character was very believable. Kate McKinnon's character ruined the movie. When she first appeared, like you said before, that's when I was like, oh, this is when the movie gets bad, and then I can destroy it because I can tell it's just gonna be, and it, it didn't get bad, but every time she was on screen, I was like, you're ruining it. You're killing it. You're killing it usually means a good thing. You're murdering and With the slaughtering. The kids today, the bad words mean good things. Yes. So Chris Hemsworth, I'm not an easily offended person, but I had a weird feeling that his character was going to offend me because, what was her name, Janine, the receptionist in the first one, she wasn't dumb, it was just that she didn't give a fuck. And from the trailers you could tell Chris Hemsworth's character was like, well the thing is all the characters are like caricatures, they're all over the top, none of them are realistic, yeah. except for maybe Kristen Wiig's yeah. character. None of them are really like real people. In the original Ghostbusters they were all very realistic people. Chris Hemsworth was unbelievably stupid, but I wasn't offended by it. It wasn't like, oh look, it's a dumb guy. No, it's just like, oh whatever, who cares? It's just, he's a ditz, whatever. It doesn't matter. Some of his dumb j jokes were actually kind of funny. Like the first few ones, like when his... Oh, when he starts itching, he's wearing glasses and he starts itching his eye right through the lens. He's like, oh yeah, no, they kept getting dirty so I just took him out. His humor was like when a little kid tries to pretend to be dumb. 
That's what I was thinking. Yeah. No, no, it wasn't believable. It was... Like I said, none of the characters were believable. It felt like it was there for younger people to laugh at because it was a very simple form of humor. That's kind of Paul Figg's thing, though. Like, none of... He doesn't play... Like, it's not 1984 anymore. Comedies don't have realistic characters in them anymore. Well, I mean, most of them don't. And Paul Figg... If you look back at Bridesmaids, like Melissa McCarthy didn't play a realistic character in Bridesmaids. You look at The Heat, even Sandra Bullock didn't play a realistic character. She was the straight man in that movie. Paul Fig doesn't do a realistic comedy. So in the Paul Fig style, I would say that it, it definitely fit the Paul Fig style. Some of the characters were a little too over the top. Uh, Chris Hemsworth's character was definitely one of the ones that was a little too over the top. But his, again, his character didn't take me out of the movie. Yeah, no. Only Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinnon, no. No. You single-handedly could have ruined this movie. People like her, though. Um, a lot of people going into this movie are like, uh, I know I'm going to hate this movie, but I know I like Kate McKinnon. I've seen her on SNL. I don't watch a lot of SNL, but even in the SNL, I've seen she was the one I hated the most. So the guest appearances, oh. we had Dan Aykroyd, he popped up, he was funny because he was a cab driver but he knew as much about the ghosts as the rest of them yeah. and he's just like, ah, oh, whatever, don't worry about it, it's no big deal. It was almost like he was still his character. Now he's a cab driver, um, he's like, oh, this is just stage five phantom whatever. Winston was uh, Leslie Jones' uncle. You saw that coming? Oh, I know, I knew. Because I was like, I know that he's going to be in the movie and he hasn't shown up yet. Yeah. Where is he? Yeah. yeah, there was also the statue of that other guy. Was there? Yeah. Where was that? When Christian Wig walked out of her uh, office. There was oh, we had the university. Yeah. I didn't see that. Oh, that was really nice. Yeah. Oh, I, I wish I had cute. seen that. That yeah. would have made me very happy if I'd noticed that. And then also Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Was the skeptic. I was actually a little surprised Bill Murray was in it because of how opposed he was of the third movie and how he is adamant about not being in remakes and sequels and stuff. Before he agreed to make Ghostbusters 3, he always said to reporters, I never make sequels. Ghostbusters 2 is the only sequel I've ever done. Except for maybe Garfield 2, I, I don't know if he goes... Oh, did he Lord. voice Garfield 2? He showed up as the skeptic. And he was kind of like flamboyant and crazy. Yeah. And kind of like a food critic kind of character. Like, I liked him. It, yeah. was a, it was a neat character. And then Janine. She was the receptionist in the first movie. She was a receptionist in this movie, too, at the, at the hotel. And at the, the end, wasn't that the other girl? Oh, Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. End credits, she shows up. Oh wait, there was a feministy thing! Oh, that doesn't count. It doesn't count? Because it was at the, in the end credits. Yeah, that's true. Well, at the end credits... Safety wires. Like, Safety wires are for dudes. Safety wires are for dudes. Yep. I hate doing that. Slimer. You got really excited when Slimer... That was actually up. when I got the most you, excited. That was really they, cute. Oh, there's a roadblock, and it's like a bunch of hot dog carts, and you see food flying out. Slimer. He grabs me. Slimer. Like, Slimer. I'm like, oh my god, this is the cutest thing ever. I asked Kevin to throw together a couple of logos uh -huh. for us. <clears throat> oh, you do see how this might make us look bad. Is it the boobs you don't like? Because I can make them bigger. Uh, I thought the ghosts looked cool. They looked a little Luigi's Mansion-y, like, you know, cartoony. Like the old one, I guess. I even said that before, they look like GameCube graphics. I mean, look at all these graphics. All the fucking graphics. Look, you see the fucking ghosts? Yeah, I mean, sh yeah, they look like they came from a really shitty, like, GameCube video game. There was one ghost that legitimately scared me, though, and you know which one it is. The mannequin. Yes, that was actual that nightmare That was fuel. actually, like, a horror movie that part. That was actual nightmare fuel. Leslie Jones walks into a room and, and it's all mannequins and she's like, no, -uh, no, no, not oh, going look, in that room. room of nightmares. That was one of the jokes she said that I laughed oh, yeah. at. And I was like, yeah, no, I, I'm, I agree. Walking into a, a building knowing that it's haunted and you see a room of all mannequins, that would be the last and then room one I would of them walk into. Wa like stands up and starts walking. No face, no anything, just this mannequin body. Oh my God. That it kind of moves a little bit like, have you seen that YouTube video of like yeah, the rubber man? Yeah, going to the store. <laughs> yeah, but it's really creepy though. The movie was actually a little bit scary. Not scary, but like it had like a. It was scarier than the original Ghostbusters. No. Really? 
Yes. But I was like a fucking kid when I saw the first one. So, hard to say. Wait, oh, when fuck. did the original one come out? 84. Holy shit. So, that's as old as you? I was born in 84. They had movies back then? That's old. That's like a century old. That's really old. That's an old movie. You're not getting laid tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like the special effects at all in really? this movie. I felt like they were special effects for idiots. All of the ghosts glowed. I think the they were trying to look like the old movie. Um, no, the ley lines in the ground glowed. Like every time you saw a ghost, things would glow. It felt like this movie's made for idiots. You have to see something glow bright to know that it's a ghost. It will haunt you every night. Whatever they are, no one should have to encounter that kind of evil. Except you girls, I think you can handle it. Oh, oh good, thanks. I hated it and the ghost looked too physical. They looked too real. Like they looked like like they were people in costume with a glow effect on yeah. them. I didn't like that. They they didn't like the original movie. They used like goofy puppets. They filmed actual people, and then they superimposed that onto the film, and it it gave them this like this like um, kind of corporeal look to them. It's just like 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 real. Physical objects yeah, floating in not, real time and space. It is not 1984 BC anymore. And <laughs> here's where you're gonna disagree with me. I think the ghosts, the concept of the ghosts, were better in the new one than they were in the old one. Let me explain. The you old one, <laughs> the old one, the ghosts were all over the place. There was a zombie. There was Slimer. There was this god demon. Thing up on the building, mm -hmm. there was gargoyles, they were, it was just all over the place. This one, it was dead people, and they were ghosts. There was some, colonial some ghosts, of them, there was pilgrim some ghosts. Some of them weren't real people though, like what about that tall motherfucker? He, yeah, true. And they weren't all, like and Slimer, Slimer, can you but argue that? Was just, okay, that was just a throwback to the but old could one you, though. Here's the thing, they didn't explain it as well in the last one. But I'd say that they explained it better in this one, that it's actually like an entire realm. Like they say, we only understand 4% of the universe. And then later on, they're like, there's like, they're gonna have whatever happens in this realm crash down onto our realm. So it's like, it's not just dead people. It's like an entire universe of different creatures. It was pretty cool because I'm such a history artist when he was like, take a look at old New York and it was all like the colonial pirates and stuff. I was like, oh, that's really cool. That one part where they like, we killed the pilgrim. I thought the concept of the ghosts were better in the new one than they were in the old one. Because what was the old one? It was like this demigod thing. Zool. Yeah, Zool, but then there was also like Slimer and a zombie and I just, there was no consistency. You feel that way too? You're wrong. I'm right. I'm right, there was no consistency. Either. either way though, I hated the look of the ghosts. I think that they looked like like Haunted Mansion. Like, I, yeah, did you, Disney. Did you ever go to Disney, you saw Haunted Mansion? Actually that's no, exactly. I closed my eyes the whole entire time. Okay, well that's exactly what it looked like. With the lights shining so bright, with like bright neon blue, bright neon red, bright neon green, it looked like something you would see in real Very life cartoony. as a fake effect of a ghost. I miss the puppets and the practical effects because somehow those look more real. The new one, it was in this weird territory where they were too realistic but also cartoony. That was the problem, is that... It's like, which one are you is going Is that they for? were all anatomically correct, like uh, using the prisoner in the subway f as an example. Like he was anatomically correct, he even moved in a very realistic way, but he looked like a cartoon character. The puppets, I would say, the puppets looked more like real ghosts. Like, it's a, this is kind of a weird conversation to have. We're arguing which fake thing looked the most real. <laughs> which fake thing looked like the most real fake thing. Yeah. I think it's just we're coming down to preference here. And my preference is right. My preference is right, I think. When Melissa McCarthy gets possessed, you see uh, some plumbing glow. That just reminded me, every time you see a ghost, it's glowing. just obnoxious, bright, glowing light. <sighs> there's no such thing as ghosts. Yeah, but there's a such thing as special effects artists who think the audience is stupid. Okay. <laughs>
somebody is trying to unleash the dead on New York City, then we may be the only ones who can save it. Why am I operating the untested nuclear laser? You have the longest arms. Fire! Oh, uh well. -uh. These women are just sad. I'm sure she just misspoke. Sad, bored, lonely, sad women. Oh. So the original Ghostbusters, it's not like an amazing movie that's like spectacular and fun and amazing for all the family. Like obviously it's like for a very niche group of nerdy film lovers. But the one thing, even if you don't like the movie, you can't argue that it's not essentially flawless. It has almost no at least no major flaws that, that ruin the movie. Unfortunately, <laughs> Time Magazine, just like just today or yesterday, released an article saying the original Ghostbusters wasn't even that good. Clearly anticipating that the, all of us reviewers are going to pan the movie. No, we were wrong. The original Ghostbusters, from a critical standpoint, is essentially flawless. One of the few movies, again, like I said, one of three movies I can think of off the top of my head that has no real major flaws. Like there's a couple weird things in the end, um, but I wouldn't say that they're major flaws. You're trying to remake an existing IP into a new movie and it has a different tone, different comedy style, different characters. Are there flaws in this one? The new one? Are there major flaws that ruin, that are detrimental to the film? It's a Paul Fig movie. It has the same humor as Bridesmaids, has the same humor as The Heat. If you like that humor, that's what this movie is, only there's ghosts. It's joke after joke after joke. Um, definitely more comedy than sci-fi or anything like that. Yeah, of course it's flawed. It's, it's, it's a basic Paul Fig movie. Melissa McCarthy movie, basically, with ghosts. I think they, they probably didn't choose the wrong director here necessarily. I would say that Paul Figg's strength is definitely an original IP. With, it, with existing IP, our, us as an audience, we're going in with an expectation. We want this to resemble the existing movies. You can't say, oh, it's a new thing for a new generation, it's not for you. Um, excuse me, but I'm paying 15 bucks to see this movie, it is for fucking me, of course. I think this movie stands on its own, though. I don't think you could be like, but it's not like the old one. I just think it's like just a different Ghostbusters. Even not comparing it to the original, though, I would say that there are major flaws in this movie. The special effects, some of the acting, even some of the story, I think. The story is okay. I like the story. I think the story was perfect. I think the story... I'm not gonna say it. What? I think the story was better than the old one. The old one had, like, no story. It had little story. Please get the fuck out of my life. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, you have nostalgia goggles on. I just saw the old one for the first time yesterday, and I just saw the new you gotta one. You got to remember, though, that you're comparing it to a movie made in the 80s. Okay. Movies were much more were subtle yeah, in yeah, the yeah. 80s. The humor was more subtle and dry. The characters were more simple and realistic. The story was basically three parts. Each act had, like, one thing of story in it. The first act is they're doctors and scientists that um, work at a university they get kicked out of the university and decide to start their own business. Act two is they're running around town busting ghosts left, right, and center. Act three, they fight, the they Zool. fight Zool and the State Puff Marshmallow Man. It's simple. it's simple. There are things the new one did that I think the old one should have done. Remember when we were watching the old one last night? And I was like, they didn't even test the equipment. They didn't show us what it was. And the new one was like, that's. Testing, that, that, they is, were... that is more of a modern convention yeah. for movies to have a... This one was more of an origin story, almost, of how... The, that, that's right. The um, old one was like, now we're Ghostbusters. This one was... The old one, we kind of had to assume that they knew what they were doing when they made the proton pack. There is a throwaway line when they, sh when they shoot the, the maid and she ducks behind the cleaning equipment. Like, They're oh, like, that's how, well, I guess it works. equipment tested. Yeah, yeah. Test complete. You are not going to shoot a nuclear-based... Uh, 
crazy, whippy laser weapon in an alleyway like they did in this movie. Like, that's stupid. What, what's stopping it from going across the street and murdering the lady that lives across the street? You wouldn't do that. It makes sense that they wouldn't use it until they need to use it. I like the way the new one was, like, coming up with their logo. They got the car. They, um, trying to find out their name. Like, I kind of liked that. The old Again, one was just like, we're Ghostbusters. Again, though, those are modern conventions in movies. In 84, Movies didn't have a, how are we going to come up with our name? Movies didn't have a, we should test the equipment before we use it. The equipment is a plot device. It's not like, here, it's actually almost a bad thing that they did a testing equipment thing because you're turning the equipment into like a merchandise item at this point. Like, look how it works. This is what it does. Let's show all the different things it can do. Sure, movies do that now, but that's usually because they know they're going to sell the toys later on and kids are gonna be like, I know how this works. Whereas in the original Ghostbusters, the guns are just a plot device. How they work and whether or not they tested them is irrelevant to the story. It's just how they get the ghosts into the trap that's it. That's all we need to know. The other weapons were dumb. That's when they yeah, got that, kind of superhero. That's what I was saying. They did a second scene where the they tested the equipment. One? I'm just gonna punch a ghost. What? You're just punch a ghost. Like that's when they got a little superhero territory. Can you really imagine somebody as big as Melissa McCarthy being able to roll around, jump around, <gasps> punching people? Yeah. No. One thing I also didn't like was that they. They had a main villain to this movie. Again, I understand why it's a modern convention for movies to have a main villain, but the last one didn't need a villain. The villain actually made made what they were doing too legitimate. What made it hard for everyone to believe that ghosts were real back in the day, back in the original Ghostbusters movie, was that there was nobody pulling the strings. It was just Zool all of a sudden decided it was time to come back to Earth. I like the villain. I thought he was interesting. He was a crazy guy that was like bullied all his life, kind of like a school shooter type. The villain made sense. The villain was somebody, yeah, a school shooter type. He was d tormented his whole life. He wanted to kill himself and kill the rest of the world in the process. I didn't like anything about him though. I didn't like how he had these little like steampunk devices he was leaving around town. Yeah, but, I didn't get that part. Um, I didn't understand that part. Well, he was using their technology. Remember? They're like, oh, he was reading our oh, book. Oh, because he was reading the book, yes. I, I get that they had to have a villain because modern movies have villains. and The audiences today are so stupid, they need somebody to focus all their hate towards in the movie. I'm just saying that it didn't need a villain. It could have just been like the old movie where like paranormal activity is ramping up because of something. It didn't have to be because somebody is building a device that is actually making the ghost come See, back. See, I feel like if there wasn't a villain, you'd be like, there should have been a reason all these ghosts were appearing. There is a reason now that guy was summoning them. Because Zool was summoning them in the old one. Zool was the thing. I think I'm more just complaining about modern conventions than I am. I think you're complaining about modern. Thing. I think you're an old man. I said that I get it. I get why they did it because modern convention. I think I'm more just lamenting the loss of the good old days when things didn't need to be so specific. No, they just had to be simple, right? The, also the just thing- Simple, that... just one thing, one thing, one thing. Very simple, woman cooks, cleans, <laughs> and kneels. Those are, the, those are the only things a woman needs to do. Yes, but that's not the point, so. <laughs> cut out the Niagara Falls. One thing I also didn't like was that the mayor and the Homeland Security and everything already knew ghosts existed and were trying to keep ghosts Covered under up. wrap. I you didn't like that? I that. loved that. I, I loved how they that. like were like, they had to keep coming up with excuses. Like the government was like, oh no, these women are just lying. I Nothing's just going on. I just don't like the convention that in modern movies where the government knows everything. One thing I liked about the old movie, again, maybe I'm just complaining about modern you conventions. Need to let it go. In the old movie, the authorities didn't believe them at first. Nobody <laughs> believed them at first. It wasn't until everybody started seeing ghosts that they're like, the mayor brought them in and was like, okay, what the fuck's going on here? Yeah. That was neat. Cause that made you feel like they were validated. This whole time, nobody believes them. And all of a sudden the mayor's calling them in and like, you guys are the expert. He even pulls them out of jail to do it. Yeah. Like totally vindicating them and validating them. What are we gonna do? What, what do we need to 
do, guys. You tell me. You're the experts. So you, at that moment, you're like, finally, they're everything they've been fighting for is finally vindicated. Even though they're probably going to go off to their deaths, like f at least they're not going to die like considered crazy kooks. Yes, you have a point there. Because when in the new one, when they brought them into the mayor's office, they're just like. We believe you. We know everything. Let us handle it. I did like when Christian Wig went over to the mayor and the mayor didn't believe her and she was like, You don't believe me? Don't be like the mayor in Jaws. <laughs> the mayor in Jaws. Don't ever compare me to the mayor in Jaws. And there was a part where Melissa McCarthy was trying to calm the crazy psycho shoot school shooter type down. There's so much to live for. Just think about, like, all the wonderful things. Soup. All I can think of is soup. What else is there? Salad. Salad. I'm willing to believe that Kate McKinnon had good jokes. And I'm willing to believe that there are people that like her particular style of humor. Yeah, because the audience was laughing when she was doing cringy yeah, ass things. The audience laughed at every <laughs> single joke. That's when I knew sometimes that there were jokes. It's because the audience was laughing. Yeah. Something big is going to happen. I think the word we're looking for is apocalypse. I will kick the unliving crap out of you, and you, especially you. We don't want mass hysteria. Get out of the city! Get out of the city! So uh, who should see this movie? Who's it for? Anybody who likes Paul Figg's style of humor, which is... Awkward. Over here. Awkward. <laughs> so that's one of his types of jokes, but there are very funny parts of this movie. You and I are not going to pretend that we agree with any of Paul Figg's political opinions no. or his attitude towards the universe in general, yeah. but he makes funny movies. Cute, funny movies. He always uses an all-female cast, too. He does. And just he still that. manages to make them funny, considering women are the worst thing on the planet. <laughs> when they're out of the kitchen. You're right, right? See? Right here. <laughs> ah! Oh no, that was too perfect. This book says that Paul Fig is wrong about his movie. <laughs> All your neckbeard fans are gonna love that. Is this movie for uh, existing Ghostbusters fans, though? If you're a super duper fan of Ghostbusters, which I'm not. Like James Rolfe? No. Do you think James Rolfe would like this movie? Because he Who said he's that? the angry video game nerd. He made a review of the original Ghostbusters, and then he made a second video where he said he's not even going to see this one because he knows it'll upset him too much. Okay, if you're that much of a fanboy, no. If you're just a casual person who has seen Ghostbusters in the past, yes, you're going to like it. Everyone on my Twitter is like, Oh my god, you paid for that cancer? Did you die? Do you want to kill yourself? It was a funny movie and it was good. Yeah, the anti-feminist crowd is already hates the movie and they haven't even seen it. No. And, and like, to be honest, like, we wanted to hate it too. Well, I wanted to hate just because I love cringy things and that's what I do. And well, that, that's the, we wanted this to be the uh, how the how fuck, fuck bad, bad is. is. And it wasn't. Everybody who has such a negative view on this without seeing it, you're wrong. And it was funny. Well, it doesn't mean the movie is good. Like, no, no. See, objective. I thought it was good. Good. We're not giving objective opinions. It is our subjective yes. opinion that the movie is good. But if you're going into this movie wanting to hate it because it's for women and for feminists, your argument is going to fall flat. You have nothing to, Other, to critique. Literally nothing in the movie is, is remotely feminist. So if you're an anti-feminist person on YouTube and you want to critique this movie about being feminist, you're not going to have any ammo because there was nothing. I couldn't think of... Unless it's anti-feminist to hate Kate McKinnon, then you're correct. Yeah, then you could do, if you're anti-Kate McKinnon, yeah, anti you'll have a field day. Yeah. To sum it up, the hype and the outrage about this movie, now that I've seen the movie, is the stupidest thing in the world because it was just a comedy movie. It was one of those movies that is on TV and you just were like, oh, I, uh, this movie's pretty funny, I'm just gonna watch it. 
sit down, eat some food. Like, it was one of those movies. Yeah, would you watch it again? Yes. I think I might actually even buy it. I want it. I like it. I walked out of the movie happy and in the mood, and I had, like, the Ghostbusters theme like, in my head. I, I'm not going to put it in my nerd collection of movies, though. It's going to go in my collection of comedies that I will sometimes watch sometimes. It's going to go right next to The Heat and Bridesmaids. Like, I'll watch it maybe once a year to get a giggle, but it is, it's not a nerd movie. This movie isn't for the nerds. This isn't like the original Ghostbusters where I'm, I'm like, oh my god, I gotta go out and buy the merchandise. I don't want any of the merchandise for this movie. I walked out of the theater, I was like, hype! That was, the Ghostbusters theme was in my head. I wanted to beat some ghosts. Like, it made me happy. It was a fun movie. I enjoyed it. It's one of those movies that you could just buy on DVD or if it's on Netflix one day, watch it. Would you see it in theaters? I don't know. Yeah, if you're looking for like bridesmaids where they're ghostbusters. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of that. It's kind of <laughs> bridesmaids with ghosts, you know? Yeah. It's not laugh out loud hilarious, but it, it's like you get some giggles out of it. You, I think you'll like it. How would you rate it as a comedy? <sighs> um it's above as, average. As its own. Now we're going to get into the numerical value here. This is where it gets really subjective. I think it was about a six. <laughs> so that doesn't mean it was bad. Like five means passable. So as a comedy, five means I didn't feel like I wasted my money. Uh -huh. I'd say it's like one above that. I not, I, I not only didn't feel like I wasted my money, but I kind of feel like I got a little value out of the movie too. There's these two types of comedies coming out later. There's the Dave Franco comedies. And James Franco? Dave, the younger brother. He has kin? Like the 21 Jump Street remake kind of movie. I don't know how to describe that The obnoxious that movie. dude bro Dude bro comedy. movie and yeah. there's Paul Fig girl bro movie. These movies are always like forgettable. But for some reason, this movie had memorable jokes. I can't think of one joke from like the 21 Jump Street remake and movies like that. But I will remember the soup the thing. The only thing I remember from 21 Jump Street is that Johnny Depp had a cameo in it. And the only th reason I remember that is because Johnny Depp was in the original 21 Jump Street. But like I'm saying, these types of also, movies... Also, there was a fat guy. Yes. So these, type, <laughs> these types of movies are usually on the same level of meh. But for some reason, the Ghostbusters movie was memorable in the comedy. Do you think part of the reason it's memorable is because it's an existing IP? No. Comedy wasn't from so the old one. All of my critiques about it being an existing IP are not critiques on Paul Fig or on any of the cast and crew. It is on the studio who pushed to have this created. Unless it was literally Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. Kingston, local. I salute you, Dan Aykroyd. Um, that literally wanted this movie to be made and they pushed the studio to make it. Sony. I think Sony bought the IP and they're just like, let's make, let's make it. They did the same thing with Spider-Man. Actually, the thing that worried me the most when I walked in the theater, the first thing you see is the Sony logo. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. All I know Sony for is Adam Sandler movies and Spider-Man, oh. Amazing Spider-Man movies. Those are the first two things that came into my mind. The thing that made me worry about the movie was when we walked in the theater and it was basically empty except for the blue-haired girl in front of us. Okay, that was worrisome. <laughs> Opening night, first viewing in our theater, the theater wasn't even half full. There was like maybe like a quarter of the theater was full. I don't do opening nights a lot because I hate crowds. Uh, we bought our m tickets at the last minute and there was tons of seats left. We That's bought our tickets at five in the morning. Yeah. We were in bed and, and you were like, oh wait, oh shit, we should probably buy Ghostbusters tickets. I was like, oh, they're probably sold out. No, there was like tons left. We got the best seats, I think. Right, dead haired, center. Dead right, center dead in the center theater. Dead center in the blue-haired girl in front of us. Yeah. I recommend seeing it when it is out of theaters, but if you like 3D and you kind of like cool... Yeah, we didn't even mention the 3D. 3D was neat. Yeah, it was okay. I noticed Shaniqua's necklace. What was the woman saying? Her necklace was like 3D over the black bars. When they want to have something shoot out at the audience, what they have to do is add extra letterboxing so that those things can pop out of the That's scene. That's what you do on your thumbnails. That is what I do to my thumbnails, exactly. The first time I notice that is the when the very first ghost projectile vomits on Kristen yep. Wiig. The, it extra letterboxed. They actually shoot the proton lasers right at you. The ghosts came right at you. I'm not a big, huge fan of 
3D, but I'd say that as 3D movies go, they handled the 3D well. Yeah, I think we established we're not fans of 3D. Who do you think should see the movie? I'm going to sound hypocritical here, but this is more, I'm saying this more as like a trying to save people from being disappointed. If you are a big fan, like a huge, nerdy, obnoxious fan of the original, you are not going to like this movie. If you are not a fan of The Heat or Bridesmaids, you are not going to enjoy the comedy in this movie. This is kind of like a new generation's Ghostbusters. And if they make their 500 million or whatever that they need to make, and they end up greenlighting a sequel, this is going to end up being a new franchise. As new franchises go, I guess it's not uh, insulting. Not bad, I just hope What's-Her-Name dies. Character, not the actress. I'm so wacky! <laughs> <laughs> That's my only criticism of the movie, really. It's just a summer movie. If you're a casual film goer, and you don't really care about any of the politics... Separate! Paul Figg's politics from yeah. the movie. If you, if you don't care about Paul Figg's politics, if you don't care about how it's pandering to women a little bit, if you don't care how... I didn't feel... Well, no, the movie doesn't outwardly pander. Its existence is a pander to women. Okay. But the movie itself doesn't pander. If you're not an, a rabid fan of the original, chances are you will have a good time. If you want to see a comedy and nothing else looks good, Spend your 13, 15 bucks on this movie. You'll have a good time. Kevin, can you answer the phone? I can't. It's in the fish tank. The one on the desk. Oh, that one. Uh, what's the place called again? Conductors of the Metaphysical Examination. Got it. Ghostbusters. Patty! Don't move! You got a... Uh... No, I'm tired. No, no, listen. I'm just going to go ahead and take off. How about that? I, I don't really think that's a good idea. No. Going to take off. Don't upset the ghost. Really? So, is that it? You think of anything else? I don't think so. You want to go bang? Let's bang. Let's go bang. If you want to make We're, it, th if you want to make it through this movie without wanting to kill yourself, pretend that Melissa McCarthy and the black. Look <laughs> <laughs> at like the black woman. <laughs> the black. <laughs> oh my god! I'm supposed to be the racist misogynist on this show. I was gonna say the black woman, but you stared at me like. The black. The black. Okay, if you want to make it through this movie without wanting to kill yourself, pretend that Melissa McCarthy... <laughs> we have to find out the black's name. It's, um... Leslie Jones. Leslie Jones. Okay. Yeah, um... Yeah, okay, here, I'm gonna try that again. <laughs> the black. If you want to make it through the, if you want to make it through this movie without wanting to kill yourself, <laughs> okay, get your giggles out. All right, all right, all right. Stash, we're, we're filming. We're, where have you been all night? And all of a sudden, you're just we're filming now. Stash, oh, you're getting cat hair on my set. Do you even care? Can you at least get your butt out of the air? You look like a whore. It's like, you're not touching June. That means it's my turn. Plus, just love Both my girls know they have to take their turns. <laughs> okay, it's my turn. Yeah, but if you sit on my lap, she's gonna leave. Because, <laughs> oh no, it's not my turn. <laughs> okay, get on your chair. <laughs> I, I hated... Gonna, I know you're gonna say it. The blonde Wait, one. Well, I wanna say her name. Okay. It's her fucking name. I should, I should have that up on IMDb. I'm glad we agree on that, though. Oh my I god. I knew you were going to. I knew you were gonna agree. How did you know? Because I know you, and we have the same taste in most things <laughs> except ice cream. 
Right, you like terrible Please Italian vote ice cream? Below. <laughs> Pistachio ice cream. Yes or no? It's so good. You're crazy, man. That's the only thing we disagree on. Well, it's not that I don't like pistachios. But it's, pistachio ice cream doesn't taste like pistachio. Well, that's the thing. I've never, I've never tasted the artificial version of pistachio. Before. Do artificial grapes taste like actual grapes? Well, that no. I'm not saying, I'm not saying I expect the artificial pistachio to taste like real pistachio. What I'm saying is my palate had never been onslaughted by the absolute abhorrent flavor of artificial pistachio before, and it's an Italian delicacy, and you're racist. I think Italians should all be holocausted. I think. I love you, maybe. <laughs> You'll be the last one to die. Everything Kate McKinnon did was fucking terrible, especially the comedy. Oh, I'll just let her sit on you. <laughs> she's not. She's going to put her tail right in my okay. face. You were not. A, you were. This one was not supposed to be. Oh, this one was not was. supposed to be in the video. She, usually, when we film, she fucks off. But what am I gonna do? Lock her in a closet? Should I lock her in a closet? No! This review is going to be I hated Kate McKinnon. The I hate Kate McKinnon, the review, exactly. <laughs> Stop touching me, this is a movie review. <laughs> that was the latest reaction. Wrap your lion. Don't move the chair. Don't hit the sword. There you go. Wow. It's like playing fucking do uh, Operation every time you move in this set. I know. This set looks really big on the camera, but it's like really tight set. You'd like, even just trying to get in and out, all of the lights and cameras are all mashed together. It's like you managed it's like, to get in and out of the tight space. I know we have to like wedge through things. Like, like did you get the vagina joke? So I have one. You move in and out of the tight space. <laughs> Oh, that was just about the sex. That one. No, it's about the sex. I noticed Shaniqua's necklace. What was the one that said? Oh, do you know why that is? Okay, so whenever they want to have stuff. Explain what it was. I'm sorry. Explain the goddamn necklace. 